All right, Dad, we're going to talk a little bit about Burwood, a little bit more about Burwood. Okay. Now, uh, let's discuss the year at Burwood you decided, or your parents decided, no more school for a couple of years. What, what transpired to have that occur? Well, I don't think it was a huge decision. I basically finished the eighth grade in seven years, and I was in a class with four people, three other people. Who were those people? It was uh, Carl Schache, uh, uh, Donna Joe Wise, and Buddy Bugle, or Edward Bugle, known as Buddy. The four, all three of them, their families decided to take them away. Now, in some cases, uh, like the Buells, I think they left Burwood anyway about that time. So it wasn't a big decision for them. And I don't know where they went from there, but I think Buddy ended up in Slidell. Uh, Carl and Joe, uh, Donna Joe ended up in Buras. Uh, well, actually, uh, Carl was living, I guess, uh, no, he was in Buras too. Both of them lived in Buras with relatives, some of whom had moved already and both of whom eventually moved because everybody was starting to move out of Burwood. What then. was the reason? Well, they were cutting back. They hadn't shut it down yet, but they were cutting back. And some of these people were moving on. I don't know what each individual reason was, if it was to do with that cutback and maybe they lost their jobs or whatever. But uh, I think Mr. Hilton Wise, uh, Donna Joe's dad, ended up staying working with the Corps of Engineers. Now, Carl and Buddy, I don't remember what happened to their dads, where they ended up. Uh, but anyway, I just stayed put, and not only was I too young to quit school, but I was young, a year younger because I'd skipped the fifth grade, and uh, spent the next two years just fishing, hunting, trapping, hanging out with older boys who still live down there. So, so to and be girls. Uh, so to be clear, there were only four kids in the school, but three of them left. In the class. In the class. Not in the school. So three of them left Burwood. Yeah. So you would have been the only student. So that was part of the problem. No, I was, we all finished eighth grade. There was no more school. Oh, there weren't. Oh, so to go to school, school you'd have had to go to Venice or New Orleans. Yeah, the, we were forced to go somewhere else anyway because there's no high school. But Grandpa still had work. And we, so. Oh, yeah. At that time, he was still working. And, uh, there was no high school down there, so there was no choice. Was there a discussion One to other, send you up the river to a school? I don't know. Uh, maybe behind the scenes, but I never heard it if it did. Uh, I'm sure somebody in the family was saying he ought to go, you know. And maybe my mom was saying maybe he could go live with him. Ethel in New Orleans. I don't know. I never, I, don't, I was, wasn't part of those conversations. Because we would frequently go to New Orleans when Ethel was and where uh, Potsy and Teddy's uh, grandma lived, and we'd stay with one of those two when we went to New Orleans. But they weren't well off, and uh, that would have been you know, a burden on them, so maybe it never came up. Anyway, I didn't do it. And I ended up those two years. Now, by the end of those two years, they were pretty much shutting down Birdwood. They weren't gonna just wipe it clean, but they were gonna shut tone it down, shut it down. So everybody was having to move that year, which by then I was 14 and a half. And uh, I remember the move went slowly because like Uncle Herbert and uh, Uncle Joe, who was the oldest brother in the family, both stayed down there another, I don't remember how long, but a year or more as watchmen 
or, or some other job, you know. And they had a few other people that did that. But my dad and the other people were working as boat drivers, as like Uncle Duthie with the survey crews, and Uncle Vincent also with some group like that. And uh, they had to go to Venice. Now, once we got to Venice, my dad was not offered a job to stay there. He was offered a job in Simsport, Louisiana. And he turned it down. And by turning it down, he effectively resigned from the Corps of Engineers after 18 years and started fishing, driving uh, crew boats off and on temporarily. And by then I had been in uh, Venice from March till September and met a lot of younger people and who pretty much convinced me, hey, you're still young, go back to school. So I went back to school at Beerus, uh, being only a year behind because I skipped the grade, but two years behind my class. So the people I knew that moved from Burwood, Carl and uh, jo um, Donna Joe, were both two classes ahead of me, even though I was only a year behind in school. And I don't know where else you want to take it from there. I mean, there's more Burwood, but there's... During, during those two years in Burwood without schooling, would you read a lot of books? Yeah, uh, I'm sure I did. You know? uh, was yeah. there any pressure for you to keep your mind, you know, no, and I don't educated? Rem or? No, but I, on my own, did a lot of things like uh, studied uh, martial arts, you know, jujitsu and in books wrestling. Or, or in was books. there a trainer down I'd there? Get, no, in books. No, there was no hands-on training. It was all out of books. And I also uh, took a self-motivation uh, uh, physical improvement course, uh, not a Charles Atlas, but like, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but it was simple stuff, you know, uh, just putting force on your uh, muscles and all that. And I'm sure I read other stuff that I don't recall reading, and I never don't, I don't remember the option of uh, correspondence you know, getting correspondence courses for school. But I was doing little things like that. And of course I was in the cameras, or getting in the cameras, so I got a simple camera and was taking pictures around Burwood, and at one time had uh, the only colored pictures that I know of of Burwood. And those are lost? But those were lost in Betsy. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. In the meantime, Uncle Buzzy and Uncle Pompey were in school at Burbank. They were in school. Still. And Uncle Jimmy? Yeah, Uncle Same. Jimmy. Was Uncle Charlie born by then? Charlie, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's like a little baby or a something? Little, like yeah, that. pretty good. And Judy, no. And Judy, yeah. Still? She's older than Charlie. So you would help take care of the kids? Uh, I don't remember taking care of the kids. Yeah. But maybe I did some. Just to help out a little Just bit. Just to help out, yeah. Everybody took care of themselves, as far as I know, back then. Yeah. And and do you remember any sort of financial difficulties because no. Grandpa decided not to take that job in Simsport? Oh, once we got to Venice, yeah. On Burwood, I, I really didn't recognize it because everybody was pretty much on the same level, even though mm -hmm. people had higher jobs than the other. Uh, you either lived in Burwood in the government housing or you lived in a private housing uh, across the canal. But it was all the in same In our class. case... Uh, uh, there was a little settlement across the canal to the north of Burwood called Hollywood. And we lived there till I was five. But I don't remember much of that. Uh, when, but my dad bought a house which was down the canal and across from Burwood uh, near the fueling station and all of that stuff, main part of Burwood. So we were across the canal, but not in Hollywood. So, so when you were born in New Orleans, you were taken home to Hollywood. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so from so from birth until Which five. Which was not an official place. But it's like right next to Burwood. It was a place named by the people. But you never lived in Port Eats. No, never lived in Port Eats. But a lot of people did. Went, well, 
Yeah, I guess a lot. Uh, by the time we were going. Didn't grandma's parents? Yes, uh, grandma's parents, my grandpa and grandma and Landry. We would go over there, I think every year, but I only remember the later years when I was in, you know, closer to 10 years old. And by the time, after I was 10, the only time we went over there was to go hunting. Uh, uh, because I think they died about that time, somewhere after I was 10. I remember getting my grandpa Landry giving me a outboard motor and my dad and buying uh, me a shotgun about the age of 10. Mm -hmm. And I remember going over to Burwood and visiting with them, which is where uh, some of Carl Shacha's people, the relatives lived too. They were still there. Uh, uh, Bootsy and uh, Bootsy Scarabin was cousin of ours. Do you know his real name? Uh, uh, Donald. Donald Scarabin. And he was the son of one of the Shache families. Uh, but she had been married to a Scarabin for a short time, but wasn't married anymore to him, whoever that was. I don't remember mm -hmm. the person. Did Grandma's parents ever move to Venice? Or were they, did they no. live their dying days? Oh in no, the 40s? they both died down in forty. Oh, yeah. Um, but are they buried in Venice or Boothville uh, or Paris? I don't know where they're buried. You've never visited their grave? Or? No, I don't know if they were. I don't think they were buried down there. Probably buried in New Orleans. Because, yeah, that's what I wonder. Man, Ethel may. Have, they may have been buried in New Orleans or Gonzales, which is where. Because that's where the the bros. That's are, where the bros yeah came from. It was Gonzales, so they could have been buried in Gonzales or in New Orleans because Man Ethel, the oldest daughter, the oldest child, I think, in the family, was in New Orleans, a whole life. Do you have any recollection of either of their funerals and if you attended it? No, I don't. Either one? No, so young. We may have gone to a wake or something, but, you know, back in those days, the kids didn't. But you were at least 10 because you got an outboard motor. Oh, yeah, I was probably 11 you know, or older, but not 12. What do you remember about his personality, Grandma's dad? He was a pretty serious fellow that didn't say much, but apparently liked me yeah. as a grandson, you know. Yeah. And... Uh, Hard work. Treated me good when I went there, but not sit down and hug and right. do all those things, but was very polite. And, and what about Grandma's mom? Oh, what she do you was remember sweet, about her? Sweet, uh, quiet lady, you know. Very, was she a lot like Grandma? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Probably more homey, even more than Grandma. Does Grandma get her looks from her mom or her dad? Uh, I'm guessing her dad, because I seem to remember Grandma Landry being more dark-haired, and most of them were light-haired, so I guess they got it from the dad. Mm -hmm. I can't ask Yeah, because you, you uh, and, look... And Vivian, the one who had the mental problems, she had black hair, mm -hmm. so it was more like her mama. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because you were in Burma, Burwood, I would imagine there was at least some level of isolation down there. So did it take, so in other words, some of your cousins like Potsy or Uncle Teddy or, uh, you know, other cousins, did you have very little contact with them until you were a teenager? I mean, did, you knew them, right? You had met oh, them yeah. as a child? Oh, yeah. Did they come down to Burwood? Did you go up where they were? What, what, how did that work? Yeah, I mean, Burwood, was, when we say Burwood, it wasn't a big place, you know, it was, you could walk from one end to the other in probably 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe less, maybe 10 minutes, but we all had bicycles, so it was even less time to cover one end to the other, but then you had Hollywood, yeah, we knew them, I mean, we'd see them. But they didn't live down there. Uncle yeah. Teddy. Oh, Uncle Teddy and Uncle Vincent. Oh, yeah. They lived there. Oh, yeah. they worked for the court. They too. got transferred. How many of Grandpa's brothers lived there? All of them. Oh, yeah, including everyone. Uncle Duty. Everyone. Wow. Yeah. 
See, I didn't know that. So Uncle Teddy was in Burwood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh. But he's just younger than you, right? Like, uh, a little bit. there's no, yeah, he's just younger. Potsy was a, a year younger. Teddy was two or three. I can't remember if it's three or two. But what about Mikey? He's too young. Oh, Mikey. Uh, and Herbert. I, I don't think or... he was born to Venice and Herbie. They're, they're like Uncle Minus. Because his Uncle age, Herbert right? wasn't a whole lot older than we were. You know? Right. And was right. just getting married. Right. As a matter of fact. No, I think they were born. Herbie was born down there. Or not, or while they were down there. I don't know if he was born at Burwood, but right. he was born while they were down there. Because Herbert stayed and was one of the watchmen that hung on till the very last. Yeah. And I remember going to stay with them one summer when I was 16. Mm -hmm. Because there was talk of having a job down there, right. paying some piddly amount. But mm -hmm. to us, it was a significant job. Mm -hmm. So in between school, I went down there with the hope of going to work during the summer, but it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. But I was there for a while, like a month or two. Mm -hmm. How about Clifford? During that summer. Clifford was still there. Uncle Joe was one of the watchmen. So he was still living there. Now, how did this transpire? Your grandpa Joseph Scarab, and did he have anything to do with the, all the all of them living and working down there? Yeah, he had or, everything to do with it. Right? So he worked down there. Yeah, he, he was. He worked for the Corps of Engineers too. Were any of them born down there? I mean, uh, did it go back that far where Grandpa was born? Well, actually, they started at Port Eads. He was born in Port Eads, right? And then well, they I don't know about born, but he lived there. Right. They all started in Port Eads. I see. And then went to Burwood. Who was running Porty when you lived in Burwood as a child? No, I don't know. Like, who who did Uncle Buzzy's type of job? I don't know. You know, there was no main, like, no, dock master. Burwood, Burwood, I remember one of the uh, managers was uh, Mr. Blowers, uh, but nobody, you know, kids didn't know him right. very, very well. But I remember him and his name. He had nothing to do with the school, but he was over mm -hmm. all the Corps of Engineers. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in Port Eats, I don't know who did that before my grandpa took over. My grandpa kind of took over as a caretaker, just like my other grandpa. Well, actually, my other grandpa didn't do it. He retired mm -hmm. and then moved to Venice and then died shortly after. Mm -hmm. um, but Uncle Joe and Herbert stayed down there working. But I think my grandpa had already been retired. Mm -hmm. and, but he ended up moving to Venice, mm -hmm. and he died... Uh, there. Not Where there. was Uncle Tony and all this? The one Tony, that was dead. Tony and... lived with my grandpa and grandma. Until the Until end. Until he, yeah. he died. He died before then? Or? No, Tony, uh, well, he didn't die before my grandpa Scarabin, but he died. He might have died in between. I can't remember if my grandma died first or he died. But Dee, I don't ever remember your grandpa and I remember Uncle Tony. He right. No, my grandpa was after. dead. He, he yeah, died he shortly died. after yeah. we moved to Venice. It wasn't long. It wasn't long at all. And he wasn't that but old. But he was living in Venice? He wasn't down in Burwood with everybody else? No. Well, he was in Burwood, but, but he, then when everybody moved, he moved. Mm. And, but uh, he died not long after we got there. But, and what, uh, what, 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 how would you describe his personality if you detected any of it? Uh, I, I, I didn't know him real well. But he was a good, you know, nice man, treated me good, and uh, we didn't have a lot of interaction because there were so many others, and we didn't live where he lived. Uh, the first five years, we practically lived with him. You know, it was a commune, like in a, a house with mm -hmm. uh, two or three families. And you, have, you don't have any memories of that? No, I don't have two, not of him particularly. I have some Or of memories. Josephine? His, yeah, his my grandma, story. I have a lot of what do you? What are your memories of her? Oh, she was just, um, you know, overwhelmingly uh, cuddly and kissing mm -hmm. and hugging mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, loved us kids. Mm -hmm. Always very mm -hmm. nice. She was very outgoing as far as the kids were concerned. Mm -hmm. But my grandpa, he was kind of a quiet fellow. Mm -hmm. Didn't say much. But not in a... Loner, hateful way. Oh no, I, I don't remember one hate, one no. negative thing. No, actually. And you d certainly don't recall any conversations about his dad, Francois. Oh no, no, or, no the Francois or, didn't what, come. What, didn't is come Francois in. his dad? That 
that would Francois be his dad. Francois would have been his, his dad. dad. Yeah. And there's no conversation I to remember about I don't that. remember any, you know. Story. And there was no one asking. When we were that age, there was no talk about. No story about that. Stories going on about stuff like that. Because you'd think along the way somebody would have mentioned. Yeah, you know, and they maybe did, you know, in other conversations. Not, yeah. But it was kind of like Ma says with her family, you know, the, the adults are here and the kids are here. You know? Right. So we're not sitting around a campfire talking about right. ancestry and yeah. all that. And by the time you became a young adult, he's dead. Yeah, right. Right. So, um, so once you get, all right, I, um, I think that's, I mean, there's so much more probably. But I'm, oh, there's tons of A whole more. lot. There were some names you mentioned the other night. About, well, here's a question I have. Burwood, even in its heyday, I can't imagine that they would have eight or more teachers at this probably one room school. Two. Two. So how did that work? If you're in a class, a did you have a class with Uncle Buzzy? Younger grades? I mean, how did that work? Yeah, for a time, I'm sure, until I got it went first through fourth in one room and fifth ah, through eighth in the other room. Gotcha. Okay. And you had two teachers. And I think for a while they had a principal separate from the two teachers. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I don't remember, like Mr. Bollinger, I remember being a principal. And he may have taught for a while. Was their sole purpose to do education down there? Or they were oh, Corps of Engineer workers? Oh, no, no. The they were strictly brought in by the state <coughs> Interesting. to teach. Who were the teachers? Do you remember their names? I uh, remember Ms. Nelson was my first teacher. Do you remember first, her first name? Uh, no. It might have been Elizabeth or something like that. Uh, and then... Somewhere between the first and the third or fourth grade, they moved the schoolhouse. Like it was at the very lower end of Burwood, just before you went into the naval base, mm -hmm. is where I started school. But either the very next year or two years after I started, they moved it to another building, which I don't know what the building was. It was a duplex of some kind, and had an open space between that building and the the what we call the DA, movie theater, mm -hmm. but they had all kind of other functions in. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. that's where I graduated from eighth grade in that building. And they had a space big enough to have a softball field and a wow. well, playground. You know, you look at it now and you wouldn't think there's room for any of that because the, well, look the at land now, is gone. Have nothing. There. It doesn't matter what you compare mm -hmm. it to. There's no land. Period. And this is where all the ships came in. Right next to Burwood? Uh, well, by all the ships, what do you like mean? Southwest Pass, right? Is that where Oh, you mean all the, the uh, traffic. Any ships to New Orleans. The traffic. You, the don't traffic. Mean, you don't mean ships that stop. The traffic, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. I, I would say not all. Some went through South Pass. South Pass was still oh, open. Oh, I see. So a few went through there, but most of the ships went through Southwest Pass. Yeah. And that's why Burwood was lasting longer, because... The reason the Corps of Engineers was there is to keep the pass open because it was silt up. Or... It was silt up. Yeah, they'd have to dredge, constantly be dredging. Right. They'd dredge in the river and then go out and dump it in the Gulf. Mm -hmm. Keep the bar from building up where the ships could right. get through. What was Grandpa's specific task with him? He was a boat job. Boat driver. He just drove the boat. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure in the early days he was all. It restarted. Right? Something's going on with the camera. It's like it went black and now it's restarted. So something's going wrong with this camera. But it's okay. It's recording oh. again. So uh, we were talking about um, Grandpa's specific job. Yeah, he specific was, job. He was a boat driver. Yeah. yeah. Well, what was Grandpa Joseph Scarabin's uh, job down there? I don't remember. Like what caused him to be involved with the Corps of Engineers? I don't know. He probably could have been a boat driver. He could have been... A mechanic, it could yeah. have been, you know, a number of different things. Right. I don't remember all their jobs. I know Herbert, I mean, uh, Uncle Ike and Uncle Duty were boat drivers because they got blown up in a boat one day. What happened there? Well, they had a big boat shed, not straight across from where we lived, but a little up the canal on the Burwood side. There was a big boat shed, but it put all the, what they called W boats. They were like, mm -hmm. you know, blunt nose boats that maybe carry six people, and they had gasoline engines in them, and they had these uh, fans that you fire up and uh, uh, 
start ventilation before you start the boat up. Well, something went wrong, and one morning they were cranking up the boat, and they, they were on the back of the boat somewhere or on the, the walkway by the boat. It was, it was a big shed, and you drove the boats up in there, and they had a walkway alongside where you get out the boats. Blew them boat in the water. Burned them real bad. Face? Mm. Every, yeah, head to toe. Wow. They, were, they had to be taken to New Orleans and uh, stayed wrapped up and... I don't remember stuff. seeing scars on them. Well, the it, it probably didn't linger that long, and it wasn't that severe. I don't know how much third degree they had, but they were burnt. You know, head Both to, of them. They were burnt head to toe. They were yeah. in the fire and blown right. into the... What saved them probably... Lucky they were thrown When they out. hit the water, yeah. yeah. Blown into the water. Wow. And lucky somebody was there to get them so they didn't drown. Right, right. But both of them, that happened to <coughs> In the same accident. Same accident, yeah. Wow. But anyway, my dad drove the same boats they were driving. No. Now, Caduthi, I think he was involved with the survey crews. And Herbert was kind of a grunt type for a while, but he might have been involved with some of that, too. Mm -hmm. Some of these people worked on the island, like maybe my grandpa was more of a watchman, uh, mm -hmm. general purpose type of guy. I don't know. Yeah. Uncle Joe, too, same thing. I don't remember him driving the boats. Mm -hmm. He was more working because they had a big office building mm -hmm. out by the river, you know, near the main docks. And they had a big dock out there where ships, when you asked about the ships, that's what I thought you meant. A, a literal ship could come tie up there. No. And, the, and the dredge boats would tie up there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the freight boat that came from New Orleans that brought all the, the food items Grocery. and hauled all the uh, hides and fish mm -hmm. and shrimp out of, mm -hmm. out of uh, Burwood tied up there. Mm -hmm. But anyway, right up uh, above there, there was a, an office building, and they all went to work in there. And uh, some of them worked in that building. You know, like I remember... Uh, uh, like uh, the, the shoot, can't remember the family. They moved to Venice. Anyway, they were going there. Some of them were just working there. It's draft like Uncle Jimmy. Yeah. You know, they were Uncle Jimmy back mm -hmm. then, and dra doing their drafting and right. like, things for the river. Design with the yeah. whatever they had to do with the dikes and the depths of the mm -hmm. water and whatever they did. The, they had some draftsmen in there, and. Um, I don't remember any of our family being a draftsman, but there were some people mm -hmm. that lived down there. The Bove, Bove, that's who I was trying to think of. The Bovees. But anyway, you started this with the teachers. Miss Bove was a teacher down there, but I don't think she ever taught me. Mm -hmm. She was always in the other room. It seemed. Mm -hmm. Like by the time she was teaching, I was in the, the upper room and she was teaching in the lower room, mm -hmm. lower grades. But I do remember Mrs. Thibodeau, which was kind of a blonde-headed, uh, pleasingly plump lady, mm -hmm. attractive, uh, being my teacher in the fourth grade. Mm -hmm. And I think she was probably instrumental in getting me to skip the fifth grade because I didn't mm -hmm. go from fourth to fifth when I went in the other room. I went from fourth to sixth. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and then by then, I uh, had a teacher named uh, Dennis Parks. He was uh, kind of a jolly, chubby guy. Mm -hmm. Real, everybody liked him. Mm -hmm. Friendly guy. He ended up moving up to Beerus and was teaching mm -hmm. somewhere, some middle school somewhere. In there. Yeah. I think he taught one of the private schools that had just taught, uh, uh, I don't know what they called the people, and the local people who weren't white. I don't mm -hmm. know what they called them. Yeah. But he, Malavis. Yeah, Malavis. Mm -hmm. He was teaching what they called Malavis. Because mm -hmm. it was segregation. Around Beerus. Yeah. Yeah. That's the last I heard of it. And then he died. Yeah. yeah. So there's no more Mr. Park. Mm -hmm. Dennis Park. Now you mentioned a naval station. So does that mean there were Navy service men and women down there? Before at all? 1945, yeah. Okay, so up until the time you were five. Five. So once the war ended, they were gone? When the war ended. They but the station stayed there? Well, or? they started shutting it down and dismantling it. It took years, of course, oh, to I do see. that. Yeah, yeah. I remember the buildings, you know, they would tear them down and there would still be concrete with uh, studs sticking yeah. up. Uh, and, and they had hundreds of uh, these big brass uh, 
keys. And us kids ended up with them, and we would play, like you play close, right. closest penny to the wall, we played throw the keys to the wall because yeah. we had so many keys, big right. brass keys, mm -hmm. like a skeleton. You didn't save any? No. I wish I would. Yeah. Because they were solid brass. Right. Do you remember what sort of entertainment? Was there a theater there? Or they had like theater. Like family entertainment? Or they had a theater. They'd churches? Uh, they show movies every now and then. Uh, a priest would come down uh, maybe once a quarter or something like that. They'd have mass for the people. Mm -hmm. And it may have been more often, but I wasn't in the church, so mm -hmm. I don't know for sure. And other denominations would bring preachers, you know, Baptists mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah. Like the, the wises, they weren't Catholic, so they were, mm -hmm. some other preacher might come down there. But they'd have movies in that place. They had a store, it was kind of a square there that was open. The movie theater was like this, post office back in the middle, and a grocery store over here. Mm -hmm. So in the middle was open like a square. Yeah. And uh, and they'd have, you know, our graduation was in that building. Mm -hmm. A whole lot of things. And they'd have dances for adults and of course mm -hmm. some of the kids would go. They have a bar? Every, no, no they would, no. well, they set one up. Yeah. They didn't have one permanently. No, there was no bar down there. In its heyday, at its maximum, how many people would you say live there? 2,000 or less? Probably during the Navy base and Army base years, there might have been 2,000. Uh, by the time they started shutting all that down, we were probably in the 500 range at max, mm -hmm. which by the time we left was getting 300 or below. Right. You know, Do you remember any storms coming through when you were a I child? I remember one particularly that we had to evacuate and we had to go into a bigger, stronger building. They called it the mess hall, but it had rooms uh, all around it, around the mess hall. But nothing of the caliber of Betsy Camille or Katrina? No, no. This, this would have probably been 110 mile an hour winds, would have blown through, and once it went through, it was all over. Mm. I think the winds got pretty high that one time, because what they would do is they would put stakes out all along the pavements. There was no streets. They had paved pavements running up and down Berwyn. They put mm. them out. And they would put a rope all along there for people that had to go out mm -hmm. and they would hang on to them ropes in case it got too bad. Mm -hmm. They were strong enough to hold them. But it never developed. I don't think it ever got that. There were no paved roads there? Huh? Paved concrete. Really? Uh, uh, paved mess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, like sidewalks? Walk sidewalks, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, sidewalks that were paved. That's the and do you remember any, like what sort of, uh, what sort of, uh, government representation. Was there uh, a police force? No, or no. Not even like one cop no. on the, on the no, beat? So, if something, like if, something illegal would happen, which I don't remember it ever happening, uh, they'd have to call somebody. New Orleans or Venice. Venice or, uh, somebody sent somebody down from Plaquemines Parish. Yeah. So uh, it was part of Plaquemines it was Parish. Under, yeah, it was under Plaquemines, Plaquemines Parish jurisdiction mm -hmm. because when they voted, you know, they would right. send somebody down there for yeah, us to, to get vote. get the tally, yeah. So it was under that jurisdiction, yeah. but we'd hardly ever, unless they came down there fishing right. or hunting or something. Were there vehicles, like cars? No vehicles. Uh, yeah. I remember every... But people had bicycles. I remember a couple of times somebody brought their car down there, but they <laughs> made what? them take it back yeah. off. You know, yeah. there was nowhere to drive. There was nowhere to drive. Yeah. Just drive maybe a hundred yards and yeah. that's it. Right. But I remember somebody bringing one down once or twice, but they had like bulldozers. Mm -hmm. uh, front end loaders and but bicycles people use every, bicycles a lot of people had bicycles I remember my first bike I can't remember if Herb or Herman somebody gave it to me solid aluminum all the metal parts were aluminum and a I, good had, bike. I had that bike a long time I brought it to Venice mm -hmm. and uh, yeah everybody had bikes no, I shouldn't say everybody not everybody but a lot of people mm -hmm. but you could walk anyway but you could walk. Yeah, yeah, it, it everything was close. I mean, it's like two miles, maybe right. maximum distance yeah. that you had to walk. Everything was pretty close. Right. Yeah. All right. Anything else you can think of about your Burwood days? No. Well, back to the Army and Navy People, base. I remember, you know. as a young child, hearing the sirens go off, and there'd be some guns, you know, going off. 
And uh, the, what was that? the explanation was that they thought they spotted a submarine off the coast and they were shooting at it because they had these big cannons on the army base, big turrets. I never did see the cannons, but I saw the turrets after they took them off. And they had a, what I think was a 50 millimeter machine gun or some semblance of that on top of the water tower because they had their own water tower at the Navy base. Mm -hmm. We had a water tower in Burwood. They had a water tower down there. And they would shoot from that, so it would shake the whole place. You know? Yeah. The whole place would shake when they shot that. Yeah. And I do remember that happening once or twice, but I was... Under five. Six, you know. Five, six, well, yeah. Because the war was over. Yeah, five or six, somewhere in there. Right. Because uh, I thought I heard, remember hearing after we moved to the other house, which would mean, I guess it could have still been five, and that would have been 1945. Um, but after that, they started just dismantling everything. Yeah. And I remember them loading barges up with sheets and pillowcases, all that stuff. They didn't give it to nobody. Mm. They just loaded them up and went offshore and dumped it. Wow. They wouldn't let people have it. And there was no television at this time, right? Well, the television started in the early 50s, about this time that I was finishing school. So I would hang out by the Myers, you know, Sonny Myers, Leora, uh, and Evelyn's sister. Uh, we were, her and I were pretty close, but even though she was six years older, mm -hmm. it was like my big sister, you know, she treated mm -hmm. me like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd hang out there. In Burwood? Yeah, yeah, in Burwood. And there was a TV? And TV, yeah. They had a TV. Mm -hmm. There wasn't many. I think the Wises had one and they had one. And I don't know of anybody in our family. What would you watch? Mostly wrestling. Some news programs, but mostly late at night, uh, you could get the wrestling whatever day it was on or days. Uh, we would watch that if they had a box. Real wrestling or what evolved into fake wrestling? Well, it turns out it's fake. Just we, the entertainment. We didn't know it was yeah. fake. That's weird that that's one of the few first yeah. entertainment yeah, on television. It was professional wrestling, but a little more professional than what you see now. It wasn't as right. wasn't as fake. Yet, yeah, but it was fake. Right. We found out. Yeah. And uh, if they had a big boxing match, you know, one of the big, big names would catch that. A lot of snow? A lot of snow. You ha it was yeah. hard to watch. Could have, you couldn't even we didn't it. know it was that bad because that was the best. But yeah. now to look back, yeah, a lot of snow. You never snow. tolerate it now. No, but, you wouldn't even watch But it. back then, it's all you got. Yeah, it's all you got. It's black and white and snowy yeah. and noisy. Right. But radio? Radio. You get yeah. that pretty clearly or Used no? to listen. Oh, yeah. Shortwave or, uh, well, or AM? AM. And, uh, yeah. And it would go in and out. You know, it would fade. And, but I remember listening to it a lot. But did your family have a radio? Oh, yeah. Everybody yeah. had a radio. Even the kids? Like you had your own or the whole family no, shared a radio? I don't remember me having a radio. but. Mm. Um, and would Grandpa listen to the radio and have it on? Yeah, they would. If, especially if it was something... They like, you know, country western music, mm -hmm. the Grand Ole Opry, or some news thing. Mm -hmm. They would listen to it. Like, what was a typical evening after work, the work day's done? Grandpa's home, the whole family's home. What's a typical evening like? There's it, no TV. I don't remember it being like that. Would you, would you go out and go to... I remember to the, it being, you know, like, once TV came around, we were gone. We weren't even at the house. Right. I say we. The younger kids were still home, and they yeah. would go... They would go to bed. We'd go to bed probably six, eight, seven o'clock at six, night. Six, seven, eight o'clock. Yeah. yeah. And be up early five or, in the morning, yeah. five, six o'clock. Yeah. And, uh, and well, you each had your room, or you shared one with Uncle Buzzy? Oh no, Bobby. there was no way we each had a room. Bunk beds or no? No bunk beds. Uh, I'm trying to remember how it was. In Venice, you had bunk beds. In Venice, but not a uh, not in Berwyn. Uh, my mom and dad had a bedroom. Then there was a big living room. Then there was another bedroom where Buzzy, I don't remember how it was split up, but right behind this big bedroom in the front was a bedroom in the back over here. And I was in there and somebody else was in there. I was pretty much to myself, except it seemed like sometimes somebody was there. You don't remember who. So the other big room in the front was pretty much Buzzy, Pompey, uh, Jimmy. Judy, and Jimmy, and, and, and uh, Charlie. Charlie. 
But maybe sometime one of them was with me. I don't know. I don't remember exactly what the configuration was. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times I wasn't there. That's step. You, if you weren't watching TV, I'd get home 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. Wow. You know, 12 years old. And they wouldn't get mad. No, uh, nobody. Then you I had to cross kinda... the canal every night. Oh, wow. Too. Yeah, you had to cross the canal. So by yourself in a boat? By myself, yeah. In a boat? In you a take skiff. A boat? Uh, P road sometimes. At night? P road sometimes. Most of the time we had a skiff, but sometimes it would be a P road. Yeah. They raised their self. Yeah, yeah, we raised our self. I can't imagine, you know, Parker doing that. Yeah, like one time they mm -hmm. had to drag the canal for Ted because Uncle they Ted. thought he drowned. You know, and I think they had to do that for somebody else. Where, where, where did he end up? Being? Well, he was out. He, you know, he'd get. He was. He was like Buzzy. He was mean and yeah. do all kinds of mm -hmm. uh, things. And like they set the canes on fire one time. And uh, I don't know if it was the same time he was missing, but he was missing for that because he was hiding out. He didn't want to get a whipping. Mm -hmm. And another time they thought he drowned, so they were dragging the canal, and somebody found him where he was hiding out in the canes. They were dragging with these big hooks, I remember. They mm -hmm. put these hooks behind the boat. Oh, Do you remember that day? Yeah, I remember. Specifically? I remember. It went Uncle on, Vincent. Went on for a couple of hours, people crying and... Oh, wow. You know, thinking that he I was... I bet they wanted to be his butt. <laughs> oh, he, he got a weapon, you know. Once he... They was Uncle, Uncle Rugie was down there, too? No. Well, he was too I, young? I don't know when Rugie was born. He but might have Pots, been down there for a little... But Potsy was. Oh, Potsy was, for sure. Well, Potsy was still going to school when I got out, and by the time time the first year ended, I think they were getting ready to move. Was Potsy anything like Uncle Teddy? No, like no trouble or no, no. He was a he was just serious, well behaved, and yeah, serious, and hard worker, good athlete, mm -hmm. better than me anyway. Mm -hmm. But we would play pitch yeah, and catch. Potsy were close. Like we did, yeah, we were very close. Uh, they had these big. Uh, uh, floats that they put on uh, nets and all. It was about the size of a football, except it was kind of blown in. Mm -hmm. And we would throw that to each other because we didn't have a football. Right, football. And we both were pretty good at baseball. Mm -hmm. So when we moved to Venice, you know, both of us started playing not organized baseball, but pick up put right. like the kids. Street. Street yeah. type. And mm -hmm. There were teams, you know, we'd play beers, Venice would play beers. Mm -hmm. But Potsy was one of the best. He was he was a catcher, which nobody wanted to play. Mm -hmm. And my daddy had been a catcher. Mm -hmm. And uh, somehow he ended up with a first base glove, which was the big long, you know. And I ended up with that, so I started trying to play first base. But being short, I'd end up not playing first base because somebody tall would be mm -hmm. there, so I'd end up in the outfield. Mm -hmm. And I did that for quite a few years until I hurt my arm throwing the ball one time. Because I'd usually play left field, but one day the center, there was nobody to play center field. So I played it. I was way out there, and I mean, I threw a ball, and boy, it wrenched something. In as hard as you could. So, I don't even know. Pull the go, muscle. Didn't go to the doctor. It didn't just pull them off. But you knew it was done. It damaged. Because from then on, I never could throw a ball as hard or as no. fast as far. Did you leave that game that day? You oh. knew something was oh, serious. Oh, yeah. I had, to, I had mm -hmm. to quit playing that day. And I went around for a week or two with a, mm -hmm. in a sling. You 